Welcome back to my channel and today's video is dedicated to MDF door linings. If you are a viewer of my channel, sorry to keep pointing, it's a habit, I've got to stop. If you're a viewer to my channel, you will have seen me using MDF door linings over and over again. And yes, we've had a lot of debate about MDF door linings. So I'm on another job, it's a refurb job, a typical rip out of an existing property, an old type property, everything's being changed. The plumbing, the heating, the windows, there's plastering happening, there's rewiring, you name it, it's happening. The doors and the door linings are going, new door linings are going in, new doors, pre-finished doors, something that we're having all the time now, and we are using MDF door linings. So, I'm gonna have a quick walk through. So in this building, we have a lovely long corridor full of doors and we've got various apertures. We've got apertures which are between two walls. We've got new stud apertures. We've got existing block apertures. And what this creates is a multitude of wall thicknesses. You've got existing wall thicknesses. You've got some that are thinner than others. You've got some that can be any width you want. And what that means is, if you were gonna go and buy standard door linings straight from the suppliers, the sort of thing that you find made out of white wood, sometimes red wood if you're lucky, they're gonna cost you 20 pound for a set or something around those uh, figures. But they come in two standard widths generally. They come in four and a quarter inches and five and a quarter inches. None of our walls will suit that here. So what do we do? We either get our rip saw out, our table saw, rip them down, plane the edges up. That adds time and labor. They're never primed. We have to knot them, prime them, put them in. Uh, the primer needs to be right, otherwise they're gonna take on all that moisture from the plaster and they swell up and they move. And the other thing, the other big problem with a standard lining, the joints that are pre trench through the heads will only give you the slightest gap for a new door. So that means you've either got to adjust that if you don't want to shoot the door in or you've got to shoot the door in. And I've talked about this before, pre-finished walnut doors, pre-finished oak doors, you really don't want to be taking too much off of them. Anyway, so if we go through to where our new linings are, all right, Gary, we have got a whole stack of MDF linings here, straight out of the factory. They're a beautiful product. They look just the same as your softwood type. I'll get, I've got a softwood one here to show you. Just nip through here. So this is a typical softwood type. And you can see, there's your typical softwood lining. I'll just open this up. It's a completely different beast. And I think that, for me anyway, using this material is okay for the odd one. But if I've got like this job, I've got several sort of positions which vary. So we can make all of these exactly to the wall widths we want, even if they're only a few mil here and there. And we have the MDF preparation tape put on. So the edge and the face are exactly the same, there's no furring up or anything like that. That's what I particularly like about them. Anyway, I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna put all of these linings together, get them ready to stand in, and get a few fitted. I always think that one of the most important things about carpentry is sort of getting a bit organized, really. I mean, it's like a lot of jobs, isn't it? But in this case, we're gonna do something slightly differently here. Something I've been thinking about for a while, and we have got a piece of MDF. Something like this. If I show you on end. What this represents is our door. So this has been made in the factory. It's just been made on the, uh, no, the big panel saw. It's absolutely perfect for square. It's also the width that we want our linings to finish, which is the same as our trenched heads. All right, it's exactly the same. It's just beautiful. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make my door linings up around this. Then we're gonna take it one step further. I'm gonna attach this into the door lining, which is roughly where the door stops would be. And I'm gonna take this to the opening, 
stand it in, get it where I want it, put some fixings in, foam it, let it go off, take all this away, and it's a bit of a trial really, so I'm actually experimenting on site with you now to see if we can really make the process of fitting new frames into old openings, or even new openings, simpler, more accurate, and when it comes to hanging the doors, there's a lot less sort of work to do. So um, let's get on and do it. Let's turn it, let's turn that around and put the head at the other end. Let's put the head at this end. Oh, it's a low ceiling in here. Actually, I don't mind working it here. It makes me look tall for once. But you know I'm not that tall. <laughs> I do, um, my mate, when I first started my apprenticeship, Jason, he's now a lecturer actually in Wales. Great chippy, great chippy. Uh, we went to school together. We're real good mates. And um, remember turning up on a job with him once and the client said, oh, we're looking up at Jason and looking down at me like this. And Jason says something like, I do all the big jobs, he does all the little ones. So it was quite funny. But um, yeah, i never forgotten that. He was a bit of a, a joker, old Jason. No, hello, Jason, if you're watching. Anyway, moving on. Let's get a couple of legs. This is the beauty of this stuff. It's just both sides are perfect. There's no flaws. There's no knots. It's like working with perfect material, which is what you want. Okay, it's going to be a little bit more pricey, but I reckon the time it saves in messing around with knotting, primer, they're lovely, the finish is lovely. You know, for a decorator, eggshell paint straight onto this primer. Beautiful job. Okay, so here's the principle. I have got this amazing jig, if you like, a good setup that. It's keeping the head dead square. There's no measuring involved now, it's just a matter of going, attaching, gluing these, attaching those, popping a screw in where I know the stops are gonna be, so I'm not gonna damage anything. Take it over to the opening, stand it in, fix it, foam it, and go. So while I just take you through this little time lapse of actually popping the thing together, very straightforward job, um, I just wanted to say, a couple of things about you know doing this i can save this former i can stick this in the van i can use it we hang a lot of doors generally speaking they're always this sort of size so this is for a six foot six two foot six door or 30 inches or 762 millimeters whatever you want and also we do a lot of two foot three doors so i reckon it's worth keeping hold of i've put the lining together and I've got my former, we'll call it a former, on the inside. It's all fixed together. It's perfectly square and parallel. I've also got a rod, which is representative of my courses of blocks everywhere. So what this means is this is the suitable position for a fixing. And that would effectively be, when I offer that inside here, that gives me my fixing positions. Now, my former, my position of my fixings is where the stop's gonna be. So when I take the former out, that's gonna be covered by the stop, so there's no filling or anything to do there. And equally, the former is off the center line, so the center of this, I can still put my fixing through into the masonry while the former's here, which is really what we wanna do. So if I just mark these off here, that's where my fixings are going to be into the opening here do the same over here let's just move it like that it's probably easier oh, fact, I can just do it like this boom and that makes everything like a little production line even in an old dwelling if it's a new build it's easy just go smashing it out can't you you know you can just set yourselves up so now I will take it from here to the opening stand it in put some fixings through. So what I'm gonna be using is uh, like a masonry screw. I'll show you. These masonry screws threaded all the way through. The idea of the former is it's gonna keep it perfectly 
parallel for the door and square. We'll stand it, we'll make sure the head and the jams are level, which is easier to do with the former because you level, you plumb up one, that's obviously going to be square and level. And then we'll get it fixed with shims into the aperture, pile it through. We use the six mil masonry bit for these and I'll counter bore the heads in, even though they're behind the stops, I want to counter bore them in. So all we're doing is winding these in to hold that frame perfectly where it is. Then we're going to use a really good foam adhesive all the way around, leave the former in, let it go off, take the former out, it's absolutely perfect. So we've, we've actually got a couple of formers here, so we can get one in, foam it, move on to the next one, foam that one. By the time we finish that one, we can remove the first former, the foam will be off, and I think it's going to be a nice way of doing it. We've run out of pipe. Have you now? Right, so I'll bring the door frame in. Oh, you, sorry, you filmed me. <laughs> right, so what we've got there is we've got the, effectively the lining set up perfectly before it goes in the opening. So you normally put a brace across there and a brace across the bottom, but you can still get all this flapping in and out. So by doing this, we can try it in first of all and see straight away what we're up against. Now, that is a nice, a nice fit. We've got a decent bit of airspace around it. This aperture, the existing block work looks lovely and plumb actually, which is lovely really. So we can fine tune it, knowing that the head is gonna be nice and square. All we might need to do is just shim a leg to get that level. For example, if the whole set is leaning over, we just need to then shim it and get it right. But the beauty of this is, once we've got it held where we need it, here and here, with the finishes, we can pop our fixings through, shim it, pop our fixings through, and then we can use a really good quality uh, foam adhesive all the way through both sides and, and let that go off. And um, I think that's gonna be a really nice way of fixing it. And the good thing about MDF, unlike softwood, softwood can cup where it takes the moisture on one side, it can cut. That could come from this side when the plaster tip touches it, if it's not well sealed and primed, or equally, it could come from the face side if there's a lot of moisture in the building, you know, plaster drying out, that sort of stuff. So I'll get my drill, I'll get my masonry bit. I'm gonna put a couple of um, small timbers across here just to stop it from falling through the opening there. And also that will keep it where I need it to be in relation to the plaster. So I'll drop the door lining in. I'll spin around my blocks to hold it where I want it so it's not going to fall through. And that makes it a lot easier. I've just got to get the head level, make sure these jams are true, which they will be if the head's level, because this is exactly square, like a brand new door. Get some masonry fixings in, get some foam around it, and that's done. So I think this is going to be proper quick. So I've got it all in, pegged, I fixed the top, middles and bottoms, and now I'm gonna foam all that in, let that go off, move on to the next one, and remove this, and keep repeating the process. So I've got plenty to do, but now the first one's done, I know exactly what I'm doing, it's a matter of just screwing screws in, standing up, leveling, wedging, fixing, foaming, moving on. So I reckon that's a really nice way of getting it absolutely perfect. There'll be no shooting in on this door, I'll be able to use my hinge jig in situ, boom, 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 get them done now, prior to um, you know, getting the doors on site, so they're done. And I think that's a good system, so we'll keep cracking on there. Where's the on-off button, that one? You're on camera, you're on candid camera, boy. 
Remember that? Oh, I'll show. Right, I'm gonna just move this move this out of the way for you. There's your there's your little bug. What's going on? It's like a disco. I don't swear on camera. Oh, fear. Jeez. Right, let's get this out of the way. It's causing havoc here, isn't it, this thing now? Yeah. Leave a couple of screws in so it's not going to drop out. I doubt it'll drop out. It's... <sighs> Don't swear. It's... I am. It's part of this, you see. I need it. Just move out of the way of the camera. Are you joking? No, I'm not joking. I have to edit that out now, eh? I should be fine. There we go. Pop that out there. Well, I will, but I will now because you've ruined that shot, and I. You've got your your lum your lumberjack jacket on. Everyone wears dickies. You wear. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, if I offended anyone there. Right, moving swiftly on. So I think that by using this piece of MDF, which represents the door and the gaps that I want around the door, it's perfectly square, to hold those linings while I pack them, fix them, insulate them and foam them, particularly useful if you're doing fire doors now, they expect us to have a fire foam, an intermittent foam behind the architraves as well, shouldn't be overlooked that one. Um, and then it's a matter of, I will go around once all the linings are in, with my hinge jig and cut all of the hinges in. So this is, if you're not, oh, it says drop in the hinge. If you haven't seen the hinge jig, this is the 76 mil hinge jig. This is the 76 mil ball race, but it's the type that you get everywhere basically. And the jig is super simple. You've marked your hinge positions. You simply clamp on the hinge jig you use a small router and you just take it out, remove the corners and it's fantastic, especially when you're using an MDF lining. Try doing that with a chisel and a knife and you know yourself, it's not very forgiving. That's it, we've got a few linings in today, we've got a few more to do tomorrow and then they'll all be fixed and we can start routing out the hinges. The plasterers can come and make a mess and we'll come back later on and we will get our doors swinging. Thanks for joining me on my channel. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate all of your views, comments, likes, and all the rest of it. I'll see you soon. Check me out on Instagram.